Good morning, this is Dr. Gondi Kondoreddy. Uh, I would like to explain few important things in engineering drawing that is about short answer type questions. You know, in part A we are getting short answer questions. There actually what kind of questions you are getting? You know, you are having six units. The first unit is introduction about drawing. So that is you are having lettering, simple geometrical constructions and uh, conic sections involutes likewise uh, even you are having small curves like that so in that what kind of questions you may ask particularly about first question so you may ask uh, the questions like uh, particularly lines lettering and dimensioning what is meant by dimension you know you have to you, have, you are able to write dimensioning what is dimensioning why it is required for the uh, drawing so dimensioning is measurement showing the measurements of different uh, lengths, breadth, height, all that. So it is required to understand those who are reading the drawing. So that is we are knowing we are having two dimensions now, two different type of dimensioning, aligned dimensioning and unidirectional dimensioning. That kind of thing we are able to write. You can explain it. So then if you are thinking about geometrical constructions. Uh, discuss the method of dividing the line into any number of equal parts. You know, we were explained in the class. So if line is given, so we have to divide into number of degrees. Let us say unequal lengths, like 70 mm, 7 parts. For every 10 mm, we can put the part like that. Put the point like that. Let us say we are having 72 mm, 7 divisions. So it is not equally divisible. So at that kind of thing, uh, you have to do some method. So that method we have to explain. Uh, this inscribe a pentagon in a circle of diameter of 40 mm. So it may be 40 mm, 50 mm, but we have to inscribe in a pentagon. So inside how much big pentagon, regular pentagon, we are able to write it. It may be pentagon, hexagon, heptagon, octagon, whatever it is. Then describe a regular hexagon about a circle of 75 mm diameter. About a circle in the sense, describing a hexagon, regular hexagon about the circle of diameter 75 mm. Then, the same kind of questions, inscribe a hexagon of 30 mm side in a circle. So, then we are having distinguish between inscribed figures and circular side figures. Inscribed figures in the sense, how much big polygon we can draw inside the circle. Circumscribed in the sense, outside, big polygon outside the circle. So, then we are having what is the representative fraction? Scale fraction. Scale, scale factor, representative RF. If they are particularly in scales, we are getting. It is the representative fraction or otherwise scale factor is drawing size to the actual dimension. The ratio of drawing size to actual dimension. Let us say we are having the distance of uh, so many kilometers from Hyderabad uh, to Vijayawada. In your drawing, we are showing in terms of some ratio. That ratio, the drawing distance by uh, actual dimension. Drawing distance, let us say we are showing in a uh, 500 mm, the length of more than 200 kilometers, the 500 mm by 2000 kilometers, when you are taking in same uh, units, we are getting some ratio, that is called representative fraction or scale factor. Then we are having, uh, state the application of reducing scale, enlarging scale. So we are having equal scale also, reducing scales and equal enlarging scales that we are able to explain. Then we are coming to conic sections and curves, you are having some points like Eccentricity, what is eccentricity? We are getting uh, conic sections, what is E? Then uh, name various se conic sections. How hyperbola is obtained? Conic sections in the sense only three. Parabola, hyperbola, ellipse. So depending upon E value, eccentric value, eccentricity value, we can decide whether it is a parabola, hyperbola, ellipse. What are the conics? These are the same thing. Then we are having name the push possible true shapes of the section in a horizontal section plane cuts a cone for its different positions. When we are cutting horizontal uh, cone uh, uh, with the different section planes, how it is, how we are naming them? Parabola, hyperbola, ellipse, same thing. Name the possible true shapes of the section when a horizontal section plane cuts a cone for its different positions. So horizontal section plane, we are cutting horizontally, we are getting the circle. Inclined, we may have, depending upon the angle, uh, of the conic angle, uh, angle of this uh, section plane, we are getting parabola, hyperbola, ellipse. That we are able to explain. 
we are already discussed that in the class try to see that then define eccentricity state its value of different conic sections so e value is one parabola hyperbola e is greater than one uh, ellipse we are going to have uh, less than one same thing we have to do it uh, the section plane is cutting all the generators of a cone. What is the shape of the section plane you are obtained? This is one question you are asked. The section plane is cutting all the generators of the cone. So, you know it is an ellipse. So, if it is a parabola, hyperbola, it is not cutting all the generators. So, but if it is an uh, ellipse, we are, we are cutting all the generators of the cone. So, it is ellipse answer. What are the applications of parabola, ellipse and hyperbola? Uh, just we have to read about this parabola where we are getting the parabola where we are getting the ellipse applications bridges and all we are seeing the thermal thermal power plant uh, this um, what is called cooling tower it is in the shape of hyperbola all that the applications we are able to tell you tell uh, explain to the examiner we have to explain that then differentiate between epicycloid and hypercycloid epicycloid and hypocycloid Yes, see, cycloid, we know it. When circle is rolling on a table or a straight line, it is called cycloid. So, epicycloid, when it is rolling, a circle is rolling about another circle, it is called epicycloid. Then, hypocycloid is a circle which is rolling inside of another circle. So, it is a hypocycloid. Involute, we have to explain what is the defined involute also. Then, coming to projections of second unit, projections of uh, uh, points. You are going to ask how the projections are classified. First angle projection, third angle projection, second angle projection, fourth angle projection, all that. What is projection? You have to explain. What, what is meant by orthographic projection? I explained ortho in the sense perpendicular. When you are seeing it, uh, the eye rays are passing through that. So when you are keeping the screen perpendicular to it, the, the screen is perpendicular to our eye rays. So that's why it is called ortho, is perpendicular drawing, orthographic projection. What are the assumptions made in the orthography projections? This is just go through that. Uh, the assumption is we are seeing the object straightly, not inclined way. So, and we are keeping the screen perpendicular to our uh, eye rays, like that. Just that kind of questions also they may ask. Then what is meant by projection and orthography projection? Name the two systems of projection which are in vogue. Uh, two systems in the sense uh, which generally we are asked uh, uh, first angle projection, third angle projection we are using um, and uh, second angle projection, fourth angle projection we are not using. Just we have to explain why we are not using the second angle, pro second angle projection and fourth angle projection. Then we are having what is meant by profile plane? What is meant by profile plane? What is the meaning of profile plane? Side view, front view, top view, side view is the profile plane, this side or this side right hand side view or left hand side view is called profile plane. Then what is reference line? The XY line is called difference line which is separating front view and top view is the reference line. Explain the difference between first angle and the first angle and third angle projections. I have explained just now, so just go through that. Uh, sketch the symbols used to represent first angle projection and third angle projection. It is the first, it is the first time of a cone. When you are seeing a cone cutting, uh, last we are having cutting. Uh, and we are cutting once again. So that kind of thing is called, uh, that symbol when you are writing front view as well as side views. So that symbol, just go through that, how we are representing that uh, first term of a cone in front view and uh, uh, this first angle position and third angle position that you need to explain. And that symbol we are able to draw it. Then sketch the, uh, us. how to define position of an object or a point in a four quadrants related to the principal plane, first angle, plane. what is the first angle projection, what is second angle projection, what is third angle projection, what is fourth angle projection, like that we have to go through. Why second and fourth angle projections are not followed? We just I have explained, when you are taking second angle projection, fourth angle projection, the problem is both front view and top view, they are falling on one side of the reference line. So uh, both we are reading on a one side plane, it is, it, is, uh, it is not understandable. So we are avoiding that. Then. Draw the projection of a point which is in the VP and 30 mm below HP. That question we can do it. Sometimes they may ask this kind of questions for two marks like that. Then the other question it is reading like this. The top view of a point A is 40 mm above XP and its front view is 20 mm below the view. Describe the location of the point with respect to the view. That we can do it. Very small question. 
then I'm showing you one. I'm explaining one of one of the question. Front view of a point 50 mm above x y, and top view is 25 mm below. In which quadrant the point is uh, point? Front view of point is 20 mm above x y. TV is 20 mm. TV is top view is 20 mm below x y line. So it is generally it is first quadrant. When you are getting front view above x y line, top view below x y line is first quadrant. State the relation between front view and top view. That you can explain. Front view in the sense when you are seeing. In front of is front view. When you are seeing from top, writing below x y line is called top view. A point P is 30 mm uh, from H P V P and P P. Draw the projections of P when it is in first quadrant. That you can do it. Very simple. Then about coming to uh, straight lines. What is the true angle and apparent angle? True angle is the, the angle made by the line. Apparent angle is when you are drawing its position. So it is looking somewhat slightly variating this uh, true line. So it is called apparent angle. Just go through that kind of questions, uh, line inclined above the planes. You can understand that. Draw the projection of a straight line AB of 60 mm length when it is perpendicular to HP, 30 mm in front of PP, and one one end is uh, 25 mm above HP. This kind of question you can do it. Then other one is how do you find out the true length of the line from the given projections of the line? Uh, yes. When you are keeping the line parallel to any one of the reference line, so we are going to have true length. Then uh, name the methods finding the true length and true inclinations of the straight line from its projection. So that uh, that also we can explain it. Then uh, uh, this uh, ordinary question is there that you can do it. The other one is the sum of true inclinations of the uh, inclinations of the line is theta plus phi is 90 degrees. Give comments. So when theta and theta and pi in the sense I am expecting it is the angle made by horizontal plane, the line made by horizontal plane and vertical plane together is 90. Give its comments. When it is 90, both uh, what happens is the projections are perpendicular to uh, x y line. That is what is happening. We did one question also also in the same way. We just all of you go through that. So when this angle is equivalent to 90, both uh, Angle made by HP, angle made by VP, together 90 degrees. What happens is the projections are perpendicular to reference line. That we did it. Then projections of planes. Coming to projections of the planes, uh, just see what is an oblique plane. When the trace of an oblique, uh, uh, trace of an oblique plane will be parallel to x y. Uh, forget about these uh, traces. It is not there in our syllabus. What are uses of axillary planes? You can uh, avoid it. Uh, then define. axillary vertical plane axillary horizontal plane you can also leave that the sphere rests on horizontal plane how its shape will be when projected on a uh, horizontal uh, axillary horizontal plane a sphere when you are seeing from any di direction the true dimension is visible define the position of a elliptical plane such that the front view appears as a circle so when you are keeping the ellipse particular inclination it is looking like a, looking as a circle so let us say we are having like this the ellipse we are going to have a circle so yes uh, this uh, the width is equivalent to this length horizontal length we are going to have circle we just see that then coming to projections of the solids which is comes under third unit uh, name the solids of uh, revolution solids of revolution in the sense Uh, when you are taking one uh, one uh, what is called uh, i will explain you if you are having some rectangle so you are rectangle when you are just handling like this when you are rotating like this this plane when you are rotating like this we are going to have cylinder see we are taking square plane uh, we are taking uh, this rectangular plane when you are rotating like this the area occupied by this this plane is Uh, cylinder so sometimes if you are taking some kind of uh, uh, isosceles uh, right angle triangle like as this just see right angle triangle like this what i mean is when you are rotating this we are going to have cone so when you are rotating like this you see all of you so when you are rotating like this we are we are generating the, the volume volume generating is a uh, cone 
Likewise, this is what is called solids of revolution. What are solids of revolution? Name of them, name them, and how they are generated. Distinguish between prism and pyramid. Prism, pris, uh, uh, prism. You know, it is having number of sides. But let us say we are taking pentagonal prism. Base is a pentagon, top is a pentagon. All is connected with rectangles. It is a prism. Then pyramid. What happens is whatever the position at the bottom is. Let us say pentagon. We are having pentagon. All pentagon sides are connected to top apex point. So it is a pyramid. Like uh, here, we are having all triangles. But where in prism it is a rectangle. Define polyhedra, prism, and pyramid. These definitions we are discussed in the class. Go through that. What is polyhedron? What are the only regular polyhedra that are possible in nature? What is meant by polyhedra? Polyhedra we are discussed in the class. We just go through the poly polyhedra. What is the difference between right angular prism and oblique prism? Right angle means uh, perpendicular. Oblique means uh, it is inclined. When uh, so it is straight. It is uh, it is uh, it is regular. So polyhedra. This one is uh, the other one is. I will ex I will tell you. Please wait. Uh, difference between uh, uh, right angular. oblique prism oblique uh, in the sense incline inclined inclined so if it is there like this inclined it is called oblique uh, oblique solid define frustum of a solid frustum in the sense cutting name the methods that obtain the projection of solids name the methods to obtain the projections of solids what is the shape of the top view of the right circular cone which is resting with its base on what is the shape of the C. What is the shape of the top view of the right circular cone, which is resting with its base on HP? Top view is asking what is the shape of the top view of the right circular cone. Cone, which is resting with its base on HP. circle only. Explain the method drawing the projection of solid in a simple position. The axis is perpendicular to one plane and parallel to another. This one we did it. this question explain the method of drawing the projection of solid with x inclined to one of the principal planes these solids we did it what is the procedure to draw the projections of solid when x is inclined to one reference planes and parallel to another these are the questions we were discussed coming to sections of solids uh, these are about solids sections of solids which is comes under uh, uh, sections of solids fourth unit what is meant by sectioning of an object sectioning means cutting an object Why you are assuming to cut the object? Because when you are not assuming to cut, you don't know what is there inside. We are unable to draw the drawing about that. Inside parts to know the inside parts, we are sectioning the object. Why solids are sectioned? That is the reason. To know inside parts, we are sectioning the solids. What is sectional views? List out the different types of cutting planes. What is meant by sectioning a top view, sectioning front view? Differentiate between a section and sectional views. what is the apparent section and true shape of the section how do you obtain the true shape of the section of the solid these are the questions possible questions they ask in fourth unit how is the true shape of the section obtained how to represent section planes in drawing what are the different positions of a cutting or section plane when the sectional top view does shows the true shape of the section when the sectional front view does shows the true shape of the section See, these are some of the things they may ask even in sectional solids, section of the solids, sections of the solids. Then we know in sections of solids, one more part will be there about development of surface. Here, generally, what is meant by development of surface, and what are different type of developments? Let us say for drawing a prism, what kind of development we are using? What method of development we are using? Cone, what kind of development we are using? Pyramid, what kind of development we are using? That is, uh, they are asking. that's all about uh, isometric projection and views uh, here name the pictorial position which is the three dimensions of solids can be shown in one view so it is isometric projection explain the isometric views isometric projection explain the advantages of isometric projections easily understandable so if you are saying it is a front view top view and side view uh, rather than that if you are showing all the views in a single drawing it can be easily understandable that is the advantage of isometric projection and isometric view and here they may ask what is meant by isometric projection isometric drawing 
So when you are drawing the length, breadth on 30 degree line, height, height only. If you are taking true dimensions, it is called isometric view or drawing. If you are taking length and breadth and even reduce it to 0.817 times as compared to true shape, it is isometric projection. In isometric projection, all length, breadth, height are reduced to 0.817 times. And the angle, no problem. It is isometric view or isometric drawing, both are same. Here, one thing we have to remember, isometric view is one where we are taking two dimensions. The angles are same. And to isometric projection, we are taking uh, the length, breadth and height are reduced to 0.817 times of the original drawing. Distinct is clearly between isometric view and isometric projection that we were discussing now. Isometric scale, I explained about isometric scale, when we have to draw the uh, reference line, then we have to draw the 30 degree line, we have to draw the 45 degree line. So, <coughs> we have to take original length on 45 degree line. So, let us say it is 70 mm, we require to have in isometric length, what we have to do it? We have to take that uh, 70 mm on 45 degree line, we have to project that length uh, 70 mm to the 30 degree line. Whatever the length we are getting on 30 degree line, it becomes isometric length. Here what they are asking, explain the terms isometric length is true length. Define isometric axis, isometric planes and isometric scale. What is the difference between isometric view, isometric projection? What is the shape of the isometric projection of a circle? Isometric projection of a sorry, sir, circle is a ellipse. What is the shape of the isometric projection of a circle? It is ellipse. Yes, these questions we can do it. Sketch the isometric projection of a uh, square prism, 30 mm side and 50 mm height, that we can do it. Draw the isometric projection of a sphere of 100 mm diameter. Compare first angle, third angle projections of method. Compare the first angle and third angle projection methods. What is meant by orthographic projection? Sketch the symbols used in first angle projection, third angle projection. That is the first one of a cone, we have to do it. That first term of a cone, we have to draw it in first angle projection as well as third angle projection. Explain the terms reference for planes, projectors. This is about uh, isometric projections, isometric views. Then coming to sixth unit where we are having isometric conversion of isometric to isometric views to isometric orthographic views, isometric views to orthographic views. So here uh, even we are having CAD questions also. So here highlight the main advantage of CAD system design and drafting. Give you a brief review of CAD software used for the drafting modeling. Name of any uh, five input devices used in computers and describe them in brief. Give you a de brief description of the output and uh, storage devices of a computer. This kind of questions generally we are asking. Explain the role of units and limits. Commands in, uh, explain the role of units and limits. Explain the role of units and limit commands in setting up the AutoCAD drawing space. Describe the type of length and angle units it can, which can be set in AutoCAD. Give the suitable examples each. Explain the different settings of available in units, units dialog box of AutoCAD. So these are some of the questions they are asking. So my question is, my thing is, please prepare well uh, in this. Generally in AutoCAD, uh, Generally, they are asking short answer questions, but because in sixth unit you are having conversion of isometric views to orthographic views, they may ask that question. They are giving isometric view, they are asking you to draw orthographic view for that. There we have to draw front view, top view, side view. Let us say if left hand side is visible, right side of the front view we have to do it. Let us say right side of the right side is visible clearly, left side of the front view we have to do it. This is how we have to do it. Thank you. Thank you all of you.